for coming. Come Love on, y'all. come on, come on, come on. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning, everybody. It is so good to be here with you. I am Minister Lisa. We have Minister D and Janelle Richardson, and we have Minister Tanisha on here. And this is Fill Up Fridays. This is Fill Up Fridays, and we thank you for joining us this morning. Hasn't it been an amazing, amazing month of community? Talking about sisterhood, talking about community, talking about love, wisdom, you know, um, giving good direction, all these great things, all these things that we need in community, all the benefits of community, which is what Minister D is going to talk about this morning, the benefits of community. You know, we were not created. We were not created to be here alone. We were not created to do this thing we call life alone. And we don't have to. We don't have to, but sometimes the storms of life can can cause us to isolate and not want to be bothered, not to want to be vulnerable, not to want to have friendships anymore, but God, but but God. God, but God. And so community is available and it is available for everyone. For everyone. Amen. Yeah. Yes. So thank yeah. you. Thank you for joining us. And we are getting ready to hear Minister D as she leads us in prayer and talk to us about the benefits of community. Minister D. Good morning, community. We are a community. And that's why we're talking about it, because we have also All of us here, and I'm sure those of you that tune in, you can see the community that we have built, but God gave us community. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for early rising. You said if we seek you early, we will find you. So, Father God, thank you for joining in in this call. Have a seat. Turn on your Zoom, Lord, and become a part of this. Let us not do anything that not includes you. Father God, we thank you for every person on the call that will view the call, that will get on the call. And then, Lord, we pray that they will have ears to hear and hearts to receive. Give them what they need this morning. Father God, touch my heart and touch my mouth. Let everything come out of my mouth be of you and not of me. Use me in a very special way and touch the hearts and minds of those that are tuning in. This is our prayer this morning, building community. What are the benefits? God, you gave us community. So we are leaning in and trusting and believing in it and walking in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are talking about the benefits of being a part of a community. Community actually comes from the word common. It's people that come together with a common interest. We all had something in common. When this community came together, we all had one thing in common. We were all part of Third New Hope. We were all part of a Bible class. And that's how we started. A common interest brings people together for a common good. And that's how you build community. When people's interests change, what the Bible say, if they were for us, they would never left us. Their interests just change. They start doing something else. There's no longer that commonality. But community can be a town. It could be a city. It could be a village. We call it crew our crew. This is our crew, uh, our squad. You join a club, you're in a community. The church is called a faith community because God has put it, put it together. Uh, we believe together, we praise together, we worship together. That commonality is what builds community. But within the community, we build each other. We continue to grow and become better at not only loving God, but loving ourselves. Why did God create community? He he created it out of loneliness. God looked at Adam, Adam, the first man after he had uh, 
named all the animals and put everything in the garden. And he looked around and said, he's lonely. And he created woman. So Adam would be in community. Uh, the Bible says that Adam walked with God in the garden, in the cool of the day. But God knew he needed a help me. He needed to be in community with another person just like him. So God himself created community. Loneliness is an unpleasant emotional response to a perceived isolation. Minister Lisa just spoke on that and she was talking. So I was like, I'm gonna let you do this because you all up in my message. But it's true. Isolation uh, uh, breeds loneliness. Remember during COVID and everybody was separated. Everybody couldn't visit. We couldn't be in the same place. And if we did, we had to cover up. There was no hugging. There was no uh, uh, physical greeting. We would just wave and, and we were lonely. We were isolated from one another. That's why people were so ready to get back in church, so ready to be a part of a community because we all experienced that isolation. But community is God's answer to the lonely for loneliness where we learn to love again. Now we can laugh, we can smile, we can take our masks off. We feel familiar once again. This was God's answer to that. Revelation said God stands at the door and not. He's trying to be in community with us. He says, if you hear me call and open the door, I will come right in and sit down to sup with you. God wants community with us. He's given us to each other, but we always got to remember he's the first community that we have. When he said man was not good to be alone, well, that was for woman too. So don't take that generically. That's for all of us. He wants us to share in community. The smallest unit of community that he developed was family. Adam and Eve became a family of two. Then they bore sons. And even after Cain killed Abel, he gave them more sons because he wanted them to stay in community. We are often born into a, a, a family, but um, there's other families, Adam and Eve. Naomi and Ruth was a family. Ruth's husband passed, Naomi, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Naomi's husband passed, Ruth's husband passed, who was Naomi's son. They became a family. And oftentimes we do that, especially as we get older. We pick our friends, we pick our community, we pick who we want to commune with, what we have in common with, and we create our own communities. But community is life-giving and it's essential to following Christ. Scripture says that that, that's because we are better together than we are alone. And that's out of Romans 12, 4, and 5. We are much better together. I know I feel better being a part of this community. What about the rest of y'all? Y'all give me a nod, a wave or something? We all feel Amen. better. Because Amen. Because we are in community. I can call my sister. I can reach out and touch. And sometimes it's the simplest thing as a good morning. Our good mornings are so encouraging to hear that. Good morning. I don't care what you feel it, especially when Janelle get on there with her little happy self. She will give you a good morning to touch your soul. But that's community. That's the familiarity. However, there is a, a definition for community. And this the community is a group of people who share something in common. The thing is, Strength of the relationship is essential. It's essential to build and maintain community, the strength of it. And, and this for me in particular, all the other virtues, we talked about love and patience. He said, but over all of these put on love, which binds them together to connect in unity. That's Colossians 3, 13 and 14. Community binds us together. You can't tell your story without me. 
when you get to this part of your life and your story, my name got to come up. Your name is going to come up in my story. Our friends' names are going to come up. Those that we commune with, those that we talk to, those that we have community with. You cannot tell your story without me. And then I'm going to rely on Dr. Nelson for this next point because community just doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It takes time for change. And it takes time to grow. When you get in community with other people, you pick up on things. You see something you like, but you'll also see something you don't like. But in the liking or not liking or seeing, you get to grow. You get to expand. You get to see what other people are doing. You see how it affects you. You see what can I do with that? Well, that right there is not good for me, but this over here is. Um, one of the ladies on here got a pair of orange chairs. Y'all have seen them on the reels. I love them chairs. Guess who's going to get, they not going to be orange, Minister Lisa. They're going to be a different color. But those <laughs> chairs just excite me when I see them. And I see what color can do, that pop of color can do. Being in community, I got to experience that with her. It also takes honesty. Honesty and acceptance are two key ingredients for the deeper relationships in the community. We can be honest with each other. We always talk about this is a safe place. Mm -hmm. We make it a safe place. Well, to, for it to be safe, we've got to be honest and then we just have to accept some things. Yeah. All of us are different. All of us got our own characteristics. And then it also takes forgiveness. You got to forgive some stuff. We Some people raised in the same house think different. Imagine all these people in this community. We're going to have different thoughts, different perspectives, different ways of looking at things, different ideas. I hate chocolate cake. Somebody in this group love chocolate cake. Now you put that chocolate cake in front of me, it'll sit there all day until it's moldy. Somebody else will eat it up and, and they don't even understand why I don't like chocolate cake. However, that's what makes us different. That's the yin and the yang of a relationship. That's what you like, that's what I, and I'm good when I'm eating chocolate cake and I'm good with you eating it. But it goes back to Dr. Nelson. Dr. Nelson talked about when she's the time, the tension, and the trust. Mm -hmm. That's what builds community. That's what builds relationships. The time, the tension. We have to spend time together. Our group in particular, we get together. We laugh. We fellowship. We enjoy one another. You see my quirks. I see your quirks. And guess what? They all good. We make sure that we're in community with each other. But I would add one other T to that, Dr. Nelson, and that would be there are tests in a community. Sometimes you will be tested. Can you accept this? And maybe you really, that, that don't go so well with you. But can you accept it? There will be tests. That goes with the time, the tension, and the trust. But guess what? It builds us. When we pass the test, it makes us stronger. There goes that strength again. It makes us stronger. It binds us together. I can easily say, well, that's just so and so and so and so. I particularly have a friend, and they're not on this call yet. I'm trying to get them on there. But they say, um, five million times. And um drives me up the wall, but I love her. And I'm going to listen to every um that she puts out. That's my test to hear them ums. But it's my friend. It's the person I'm in community with. So it's all right with me. It binds us. It binds us. We get to share some, <clears throat> some ideas and some of our passions. So we go right back to what really are the advantages of being part of a community. For one thing, it protects your life. It literally does. It's a source of collective wisdom. Everybody got something. Everybody got something. 
and everybody in the community has value. Mm. Everybody, yeah. everybody has value. There are no big eyes and no little U's in a strong community. Yeah. Everybody brings something to the table. And the beauty is we get to uh, dine at this wonderful table of wisdom and knowledge that is being shared. But you also get to say, mm, I don't like that right there. But you can eliminate that idea without eliminating the person. Does that make sense? In a community, you get to pick and choose what you what you can take and what you can use and what you can bring together to make yourself better because that's how we grow. Then you, then you get support and you get somebody to say, go ahead, sister. Go ahead, brother. You can do that. You can make that happen. We all need that. Everybody wants to be recognized for their contribution. Everybody wants somebody to say, you know what? I wouldn't do that, but that seemed like that's perfect for you. And it's all right. Everybody don't have to live by everybody's rules, but you absolutely need the support and the belief. Life just happens. The good, the bad, and the unthinkable. It's important to have people around to help you carry uh, through those, those emotions. You need somebody to say, sister, if you want to cry, come on and cry. I, I got you. You want to scream? I just said that to somebody on the phone the other day. I said, go on and scream. Guess what I'm going to do? My phone on speaker. It ain't up to my ear. Scream. Because you need to get it out. And surprisingly, she did. <laughs> and she screamed a long time. And I got it, was, it was all right. It was all right. Sometimes you just need somebody to say, go ahead. Do what you got to do. I got you good, bad, or unthinkable. I got you. Does that make sense? And then yeah. we can be influenced. Empowerment in the community, enabling all the members to influence positive change. Who, who doesn't need somebody to pull your coat every now and then? Mm -hmm. because if, if don't nobody ever pull your coat, you out here like a, um, a wilding, just all over the place. Uh, uh, who's that? Nick Cannon got wilding out. You be wilding out. And then you wonder why people don't want to be around you because nobody has the courage to say, wait a minute, that right there, that, that went a little bit too far. And then in the community, because they have already poured into you, they can also come back and correct you with love. So we be influenced. Everybody has gifts and values, viewpoints, and they bring that wisdom. You get to choose what wisdom you want to take with you. And then the second is, it's a place for perpetual growth. It's a place for perpetual growth. That means you can grow and you don't even realize it just from being in community around others that are talking, that are doing things that they're excited about, you're excited about. That gets your juices stirring. That gets you uh, going. Uh, Minister Lisa, may I share about your home? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, one person built a home. Somebody else say, I'm going to build a home. Somebody else say, well, I'm going to come out there. That was that perpetual growth. They were encouraged when they saw one do it. I can do it too. So we, we get new ideas. We, the community actually is rich because what I don't know, somebody else know. What they don't know, I might have experience in. And we pull from each other. We pour into each other. And then we get to choose what we take out of it. And then it's called borrowed motivation. We borrow uh, in the house building. That was borrowed motivation. Oh, I'm going to use that. Because if you can do it, I can do it too. 
Sometimes we find ourselves doing things we never imagine ourselves to be. We find ourselves growing in ways we never thought we would grow. But that's that borrowed motivation when you see your sister, your brother, your community member doing something and you'd be like, hmm, I ain't never thought of that. But I can do that too. And then it's an opportunity to share and learn. Community stimulates innovation and growth. I know a sister that got a mirror that you can touch with your finger and it light up. If that ain't innovation and growth, I don't know what is. Because when you get to see where people are going, what they are doing, can I use this? Oh, you know what? I might not buy that exact mirror, but I'm going to look for something like that. Maybe I want one to stand from the floor to the ceiling, but they give you that motivation to go head on. It, it stimulates innovation. If she can try it this way, I can try it that way. Mm. I remember years ago, uh, I went to a, a friend's house and she had a wheelbarrow in her backyard that was full of flowers. And then she had ivy spilling out on each side. It was absolutely beautiful. I went home. Went to the Salvation Army, bought a wheelbarrow, spray painted it, turned it on this side, and my flowers were spilling out of the wheelbarrow right along into the garden. So that was my borrow more innovation. I saw what she did and I took it to where I wanted to use it. But that's what community does for us. Community is critical. Sharing ideas and encouragements allows people within the community to, to feel free to grow, to expand, to venture out, to explore new ideas that maybe you hadn't even ever considered before. And then it also promotes confidence and encouragement. How many times have we heard somebody say, you know what, I'm going to try that because they gain confidence in community. We share the common passion. It gives people the confidence to share a subject they're passionate about. Maybe it's not even the, anything you ever thought of, but when you hear them and you feel that passion and you feel the way that they are speaking of it, it will touch you and you'll say, wow. Well, what am I passionate about? It don't have to be the same thing. It can't be the same thing, but it doesn't have to be. Because remember, everybody has value. Mm -hmm. Whatever your passion is, if it's your passion and I love you and we're in community, we're in relationship, I, if, I don't, if I don't like it, I got to respect it. But I can respect things I don't like because I'm in community, because I love the person. Amen? Amen. It gives people the confidence to share a subject they're passionate about. It also encourages people to increase their value of life by creating new things that they can share with others. I know a person built a whole deck on the back of their house just to share, just to share. If that is not passion, if that is not community, what is? Mm. Built it from the ground up just to share. They personally didn't need a, a deck, but they wanted to share. That's community. We were building community when we didn't know we were building community. As we do most things, we just doing. Mm -hmm. But look at the community that has come out of that. Ruth and Naomi were a community that had a common interest and a common passion. Their first passion was for Ruth, um, sorry, Naomi, to get back to Bethlehem. Ruth's passion was, I'm going wherever Naomi go. They became a community out of a common need. We have become a community out of a common interest. Naomi's passion then became helping Ruth get Boaz. Ruth wanted him and Naomi helped it. That's community. That's encouragement. <laughs> That's pushing each other forward. That's saying, oh, you want that? Well, listen, I know how you can get it. <laughs> and old Naomi, with herself, she ain't forgot none of her tricks. She told her exactly how to get Boaz. <laughs> and right now, Ruth is in the lineage of Jesus. 
Tell me what community won't do. Mm -hmm. And then we also get to express gratitude for our blessings. We get to exp express our gratitude. The self-fulfillment that we feel when we give more than we receive is priceless. I use um, Minister um, Gwen Hazel with her salt. Serve and love them. Yeah. I go right back to that, serve and love them. When you're serving somebody and helping somebody, it actually makes you feel better. I helped somebody at the gas station the other day. And that lady, she chased me down eight miles to thank me. I was sitting at the light and she caught up with me. And she said, you don't know what you did. I said, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I said, now go on wherever you're going. The lady wanted to put $5 in her car. $5. Gas is, is $3.49. So she got a gallon and a half. Where is she going? Well, now you can get somewhere and go get you some more. So when we share, I pulled away from the lot feeling good that mm -hmm. this lady not going to run out of gas. Feeling good that God gave me the resources to help somebody else. I don't have much, but what little I have, I can share it. And it was just a moment, instant, when I heard her say $5. And I, all I could think about is, where is she going on $5? God will put you in a place to see a need. And he will give you the resources to meet the need. Helping and supporting others feeds your soul in a way that nothing else can. Mm -hmm. Nothing else can do that. Nothing else could have made me feel that way. In fact, I was kind of tired that day. And all I wanted to do was do what I had to do and come back home. However, when I heard that $5, God put me there for a reason. Because I didn't see nobody else doing it. So I figured, okay, God. I got it. Let's do it. So a community gives you reasons to celebrate the small things in life and people to be thankful for. Um, you always want to reward people with kindness and mercy. Just kindness and mercy. It takes nothing to be kind. It takes Sometimes a lot to show mercy, but when you do, the feeling you get from it, because it frees you, mm -hmm. it allows you to grow, it builds up your character, it makes you feel better. You can walk away with a smile. People say, why are you smiling? You didn't even know you were smiling. Kindness, just being kind. Uh, the lady held the door for me. And she waited for me to get there, stood there and held the door for me just yesterday. And I thanked her. And what I said to her, are you so kind? You are so kind. Thank you so much. She said, girl, if it was my mama, I hold the door. I'm gonna hold the door for you too. She went her way when we got, well, I was in the beauty and barber supply. She went her way. I went mine, but her kindness, I was in the store just smiling because she didn't have to do it. She was just being kind. Uh, Gwen Hazel's uh, message, serve and love them. We can serve and love them. It takes nothing away from us. I used to uh, teach at Ford Motor Company and I would tell my class, it takes nothing for one candle to light another candle. When you pull your candle back, you still got the fire. Mm. Mm -hmm. You don't lose your fire. Mm -hmm. You just shared your fire. And when you pull it back, guess what? Your candle be flickering. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We did that. We did that. Light another candle. Watch a candle. It'll start flickering where it was standing still. When you light another candle, that flicker because you have shared the fire. We can share the fire. And keep the fire, look at God, and keep the fire at the same time. I like that, dear. The gifts that are given in love, out of care, out of concern, always come back tenfold, hundredfold. However, God decides to bless you. 
Sometimes you, you'll do for a person that will never look back. They will take your, your blessing. They will take your kindness and walk away. But you just, just hold your peace. Go on and live your life and watch that kindness come from someplace you never expected, from somebody you might not even know, much less somebody you know and never expected them to do anything. But God has a way of bringing that thing right back to you. You cannot go wrong being kind and showing mercy. And then we have to be grateful. God wants us to be grateful for what he has done. That's how I felt about that gas station. I didn't have much. I, I put $10 in a car. So I gave her three more gallons, okay? However, she was going to get further than she was on that one and a half gallon. But I told the man, put $10 more on my car and put it on her pump. He said, wow, you're going to do that? Yes, I am. Just, just put it on her pump. And I came out and I said, don't stop running your pump when you get to five. And she looked at me. I'm sitting at the light. She caught up with me. Kindness, just being kind. And that's what God has us in community for, to be kind to one another, to accept each other. Uh, Kiki Sheard had a song I called Flaws and All. Everybody got flaws. None are perfect but the Father. None. But we in community, we accept each other, flaws and all. But the thing about being kind and showing mercy, it's like a wheel within a wheel. The more you give, the more comes back. The more you give, more comes back. A wheel within a wheel. When you show mercy, you will get mercy. When you show kindness, somebody it's going to be kind to you. And God uses us. People say, well, God is all I need. I don't need nobody but Jesus. They work through people. God has never left his throne for any of us. He has the Holy Spirit speaking to us, leading and guiding us. He uses people to help people. He uses us with kindness to help one another. And watch that wheel turn. You give kindness, the kindness comes back. You give it, it comes back. That's how God's work, that, that, that wheel within a wheel. And then we're also challenged to become a better person. In community, you have to rise, you have to rise. They say if you're, you should have three communities, one, where you're the smartest person there because then people are gleaning from you. Then you should have a community where somebody in the community is smarter than you so you can glean from them. And then you need a community where we're all in common and that all can be one community. Each one of those people can be in your community. It's up to you, the smartest, the, the someone else is smarter and then all of us can look at the same thing and laugh without saying a word because we're in community we have understanding community is a support team to help you rise from the dark place with a new outlook on life and a new skill or hobby a new skill or hobby you got a, uh, someone in your community that loves cooking. And every time you go over there, they got something good. Guess what? You might not cook, but you're going to figure out what you like. It gives you inspiration. It gives you motivation. Sometimes we need, this is a, this is a tough one, but it's a true one. Sometimes we need tough love and raw honesty to show us that the biggest obstacles in life just might be ourselves. Who can tell you that but another person in your community? Who can say that to you but another person in your community? Somebody that has poured into you and you have poured into them. And then they can come back with a word of wisdom and tell you maybe you standing in your way. It takes a strong community back to that strength to hear it and to accept it and still love. 
often we can hear stuff and we'll accept it, but we're going to get away from you because you're a little bit too raw and you're a little bit too honest. I don't need to hear that. <laughs> but if you can hear it, not like it, but accept it and grow. Guess what we're doing? We're growing. We're expanding. We're becoming better. We're, we're becoming stronger. We are realizing that everything is not about somebody else. Maybe it's you. Friends challenge, challenge each other to meet the highest good. That's out of Proverbs 27 and 17. Oftentimes, it's hearing your sister, your friend, or your loved one tell you you can do it. You can make it. It sounds good to me. All those kinds of things encourages us that will prompt us to move forward, to move ahead on that dream, on that idea that you probably have had for years, on that vision that you have been given. It's the community that stands behind us and holds us up. Even when we get tired and weary. Even when we get tired and weary. My sister just told me the other day, she said, please go to the doctor. She said, because I'm tired of hearing you tired here. Listen, I got the appointment, but it's good to know somebody care enough to say that. Because if people don't care, they don't care how you sound. Just uh, listen to me. We need community. It is the community that causes us, causes us to become bigger, better, wider, kinder gentler, even more loving. It's the community that causes us to expand ourselves and to seek new and better ways of thinking. And I'm gonna borrow this one from Minister Lisa, processing. Who, who know processing? <laughs> we, have learned, we have learned to process what we gonna eat for breakfast. Because it's a process, but it works. Here's the key. Minister Lisa is absolutely right. When you process, you can come to a conclusion and a solution. Mm -hmm. You got to process it. But being in community, they encourage you for that so that we can stand up. We can stretch out and we can come become, and I'm borrowing from Minister Lisa again, this is my community. As you see, I can pull from them a better me. Yeah. We can become a better me. There's no such thing as, well, I'm just me and that's just the way I am. And I don't need nobody to tell me uh, how to go. No, you can be better, but you need somebody that love you enough to tell you that. You need somebody that's going to hold you up and look you in your eye and say, you can be better. It's up to you to make those decisions. It, I can say it's because of my community that I am who I am today. Can you say that too? Or is there more work to be done? You know the answer. You know what you need to work on. And look, if you got a good sister, she going to tell you anyway. So you might as well face the music. Learn how to accept what you hear. Learn how to say things in love and concern, not so hard and not so quick and not so fast and not cutting so sharp that instead of hearing the message, they feel the pain. You're just talking in love. When my sister told me to go to the doctor, I already had the appointment. I was ready to go, but her concern and her love said, please go to the doctor. Now, she did tell me she was tired of hearing me being tired. <laughs> I was just about to say all signs lead to Lisa Goss. <laughs> I didn't need that part. <laughs> oh, so my goodness. Wasn't nobody more tired than I was. However, she was being honest. And she was being herself. <laughs> Flaws and all. Flaws and all. You remain in control. Here's the beauty. You remain in control. 
you get to decide. She could have said that 10 times. And if I didn't want to go to the doctor, I'm still in control. But you need somebody to care. Somebody need to say, sister, now you done went too far. Uh, Dr. Nelson shared a story on our first Friday about uh, Minister Gwen telling her, now you need to go back and fix that. And she went back and fixed it. It was because of love. It was because of community. It was because of relation. All these things that we have been talking about, relationships, all of that gave, gave us permission to feed into each other. But there is one thing we have to be careful of. If you give it, you got to be able to take it. You got to be able to take it because they took it from you. Amen. 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 Community requires commitment. How fast can we get mad with someone and say, I'm done. I'm finished. I don't like how she said that. I don't like how she looked that day. I don't like what she did. I'm done. Because I can go over here where, they, where they're not so, so fast to tell me something. Community takes commitment. We have to be committed to this community of believers that we have come together and say, you know what? It's all right. I love my sister anyway. I love my brother anyway. I love my friend anyway. It's all right. I'm a big girl. You a big guy. We can take it. Community, you got to be committed. And I'm going to also include Sister Linnell in this because her mantra is remain strong. We have to remain strong. How do you remain strong? You remember what's in you. You remember what you got in you. You remember where you came from. You remember where you want to go. That keeps you strong. That keeps you on the path. All the rest are distractions, but you remain strong. I'm committed to this community. Lord knows we are doing things we never thought we were going to do, but we're in community. So here we sit today. It was 630. But the community is doing it. The community is together. Um, Minister Lisa pulled together her community and said, this is what we're going to do. Nobody volunteered 630. But guess what? Here we are because we in community and we love each other and we're going to support each other. Does that make sense? Time and tension and trust are crucial to building and remaining and maintaining the community. Time, tension, and trust. Thank you, Dr. Nelson. That builds us. That's the glue that sticks us together, that holds us tight. When, when our flesh wants us to go somewhere else, you know, the world will have you sitting by yourself. The world will tell you, you don't need anybody. I was in a, on Amazon looking for a particular book. My son has a book out, a shameless plug. And I was looking for his book, but I saw all these self-help books. I need community. I need somebody else I can look at. I need somebody to laugh with me, to cry with me, to say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you can tell when they're listening and when they're not. You can tell when they're accepting it and when they're not. But I need that. And being in community is valuable. It's valuable to me. We have to know our why. And we have to keep it before us. Why are you in community? Because it pleases me. I'm happy when I'm with my sisters. I can laugh and talk. I can, I can be myself. I don't have to put on that face that I show the world. I can just be deep. I can show it. I have to know my why. And I have to keep it in front of me. And you got to keep it in front of you because it will be tested. Here's the kick. It will be tested time and time again. Therefore, it will be your commitment to the community and remaining strong in that commitment that will make the difference. So what, what are our, our advantages to being in community? It keeps us from being lonely. It keeps us from being 
so lonely, we, we fall into um, bad behaviors. It keeps us from being isolated. I get to laugh, I get to connect, I get to relate. It keeps us in a, in a, um, a place of perpetual growth where I'm growing and I don't even know how or why I'm growing, but I'm growing. It promotes my confidence and my encouragement to even sit here this morning and share this message with you. And it does, it gives me a chance to express my gratitude. There has never been a time I think that I have ever left one of our, our gatherings and I didn't call back and tell um, Minister Lisa or somebody in the group what a good time I had, how good it was, how That's I right. enjoyed it, how we how we laughed and we were so silly and we just we just had a good time. Did you see that Janelle? Janelle gonna make you laugh or Janelle don't make you do nothing. Uh, it's never a time I try my best to show my gratitude for all the good times that we have. And then it, it also challenges me because you're better, I can be better. Because I see the good in you, I want the good in me. It challenges me to become that better person. And then we it's all about the being transformed by the renewal of our mind, giving up those old concepts, giving up, I can do it by myself, giving up. I don't need nobody. Giving up, women are messy. I don't want to be around women. Women keep up too much stuff. I have never, ever, and since I've been in this community, and I'm speaking of my community here, ever walked away mad, angry, been called out my name, something said that I just couldn't get over. Our community is a place of building a place of uh, safety, a place of sharing, a place of caring. We can bring our cares to our community and you find out you're not alone. You find out you got somebody either went through it, going through it or on their way to it. So we're constantly building and feeding each other. My community and I pray your community will be a place of growth, will be a place of peace, will be a place of safety, will be a place of joy, will be a place of happiness, and be a place of fun. You can have fun in your community, can't we? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we, can we can have some fun because we can be ourselves. There's no pretense. There's no, um, uh, I got to keep my face on because I'm with, it don't matter. Because guess what? We're going to come right back again and we're going to laugh all over again. A place of community is valuable. It has the best advantages. Grow, go, learn, share, be kind. Your community is key. Use it, grow in it, value it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for community. We thank you, Father God, that you have drawn us so close together that one cannot fall without the other. Thank you for friends and loved ones that flaws and all still love us, still care for us, still concerned about us. Thank you, Father God, for the community with a shared passion, with a shared love, first for you, Father God, and then for each other. Father God, we thank you for what you're doing in this community. And we are waiting, anticipating what you're going to do next. So God, have your way in this community. Have your way in all the communities that are on this call. Have your way in families and loved ones and communities on the job and communities um, and where we are uh, recreation. At. Bless every community with your Holy Ghost presence. And we thank you this morning for sitting in, leading and guiding us as you always do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Minister D. The benefits of community. Thank you so, so, so very much. One of the things that you said, um, I like that community was God's answer to loneliness. 
because mm-hmm. loneliness is is a huge issue um, when it comes to mental health. You know, mm-hmm. and so that I appreciate, I appreciate that. And then something else you said, um, my name must come up in your story. You know, you don't think about that. I didn't think about it. You know, I've never just really thought about it. Like when she tells her story, I'm included in that story in a healthy way, yeah, in a good way, in yes. a loving way, right? Yeah. That, that's amazing. And it was one more thing I wrote down. Um, community should be a safe place. A safe place. Said honesty and respect. That's so very important. It, and it's important to me. Um, mm-hmm. And then we also have to remember too, the many communities that we may have. You know, mm-hmm. we have different communities. And knowing which community is that safe place, which community is that safe place, what community can I go to and receive respect? What community can I go to and tell my truth? Mm -hmm. What community can I go to um, for someone to just listen to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's to Lisa. Yes. Go ahead. I wanted to say something when you're done. Okay. You know, which community, you know, it is just so important knowing your different communities. That's that deposit and return. You know, don't forget, what am I depositing? What am I returning? What What is my return? Because we may, when we find ourselves in a community and it's negative, there's 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 no one there for you. Is it because you talk about sometimes it's you? Maybe we have to check ourselves. What am I depositing in this community? Mm-hmm. Then I'm not getting a good return. Maybe mm-hmm. it's what you're depositing. We have to look at that too when you talk about looking at ourselves yes. and what we bring to that community. That was important as well. Thank you for that, Minister D. Dr. Nelson. She's back on mute. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I think that part that you just said there, when when uh, Minister Minister D, great message, when she talked about what we bring into the community and what's in that community. Sometimes mm-hmm. we're the one that have the knowledge for the moment, because mm-hmm. none of us know everything. <laughs> right. We have the knowledge for the moment, and then there are those that provide the knowledge to us. So the our communities are made up of many different people with different gifts, with all kinds of things that help to build and to shape our lives. Because mm-hmm. I, I think we started off by, when you start, start off by talking about that loneliness piece, mm-hmm. community helps us be shaped to be mm-hmm. who God is calling us to be. Mm-hmm. And um, um, there's a saying, um, I'm a piece of work. Your piece mm-hmm. of work because there are many parts to you, and mm-hmm. not one single person can provide everything that you need to be all that you are called to be. So I think that's why God places us around different types of people because if we want to, if we're just around people that would just like us, I think that would be a little boring to me. Mm-hmm. But because he places us in communities with all of our all of the quirks and all of the gifts and all of the this and all of the that when we look in retrospect because I was around that person I'm a better person because Mm -hmm. I was around this person they may not have provided something that I needed and it may not have worked and I had to step away from that community but what did I learn from the experience Mm -hmm. what did I get to help grow me and make me better um, from the experience so community is so necessary and um i think the word we used in our group on that friday that i said it's critical it's critical, it's critical for us mm-hmm. absolutely thank y'all thank you dr nelson one thing that you just said is that um one person can't be our can't be everything right. they're not supposed to we're not right. equipped to be someone's everything that's that's god's business and that's his place but when we expect that, those, those um, unhealthy expectations, 
for someone to be our everything who mm. were not created to be our everything and cannot be your everything, even if they wanted to, mm. even if come they on, wanted come to. On. So come then on. here comes the frustrated expectations, right? That causes division, that causes tension because you're trying to pull out of someone that has not been created and is not in them to give. So we have to be so very careful of our expectations, yes. even we. of ourselves. Of our ourselves. Right. Because those frustrated, I think it was Pastor Q that said frustrated, you know, expectations um some time ago, but that's what they are. You know, you become frustrated and you become frustrated with life. So now now you're about to divide the community because you're upset because you're not getting what you need because you're going to the wrong person for to get those needs met. You know, we got to yeah. go back to the source. Certain needs and certain longings we are born with those core longings that yeah. cannot no human being um, give you. They can't, yeah. they cannot fulfill that expectation. So thank you for saying that, Dr. Nelson, because in my work, I find that to be uh, an issue. Yeah. Our expectations, our expectations yeah. can become a problem. So, yeah. so I think you. those expectations we put on ourselves weigh even more mm -hmm. than what we put on others because we yeah. expect so much of ourselves. We think we got it. We think we can handle it. And uh, realize even you, you have limited abilities. Yeah. And stuff, some stuff just is not in your wheelhouse. And you got to be able to realize that and then point them in the right direction. I'm a good pointer. I can point you to Jesus every time. Mm -hmm. I can point you to Minister Lisa. She's a therapist. Okay, we need uh, a black male therapist. Well, Minister Lisa, do you know any? It's a way to point people with love. Mm -hmm. You can't take all that on yourself because they come to you mm -hmm. and they trust you. Mm -hmm. You have to know your own limitations. My father used to say, know your limitations and then respect them. Mm -hmm. Don't be all off in somebody else's lane. Yeah. But I can, uh -huh. I bet you, I can point you if I ain't got it, I'm going to find out who, who does have it. Yeah. And I'm going to point you in that direction. And that's a value. Yeah. That's they a value. Thank you. Thank you, Minister D. We It is 7.28. We are <laughs> time for us to, to go. <laughs> time, for <us> to say, <laughs> time for us to say, have a good evening. We thank you. We thank you for joining us this morning. This has been absolutely amazing. Continue to follow us for, wait one second, continue to follow us as we move forward. At the, with the subject of community, community is so very, it's so, it's so important. It's, in, it's important for our very souls, you know, our Amen. very, Amen. our being, we need community. We need community. Amen. Mr. Amen. You wanted to say something. Please like, please share, please hit those likes and please share with someone. Um, this helps us move up in our algorithms. We are so pleased with the support that we have received thus far. We are tickled pink that so many have tuned in and are literally in the chat saying that they have received something. So we are giving all praise and honor to God. But we ask you to please like, share, and let somebody know about Fill Up Fridays. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dee. Amen. We might go over because we I forgot. Um, we were supposed to say thank you. We wanted to say thank you. Um, we were not expecting. You know, we knew that we had to do what God has called, called, you know, called us to do. We were not ready. We even had to ask Minister Tanisha, can you give us some classes on how to maneuver through Facebook? Like we didn't know. <laughs> half of this stuff and she has been she worked with us in the beginning to get us here and when we started when we started coming up for air counseling ministries i've had this um platform since 2000 and i believe 11 or 12 and when we started in april we only we had under 200 
under 200 followers. But God told us to go because there were some people, somebody needs to be encouraged. Somebody was hopeless. Somebody was lonely. Someone had no community. Someone had no church home. Someone's faith was weakened. What your stories, your testimonies, the, the words that I give for you to talk about each month is needed. You just do what I told you to do. Position where I have called you to be positioned and I will do the rest. And oh my God, there are, we have over 2,000 followers in a few months. That's because of the need. That's because of the community. That's because of the love. That is because of prayer. That is because praise, because all we doing is praising God. All we doing is praising God. All we doing is sharing the word. All we are doing is encouraging. All we are doing is uplifting. All we doing is shouting hallelujah. All we doing is praising. That's what we are doing. We, God called us to be us, to be us. And we the best person to be us, right? And with that, so we want to thank you. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. We are so blessed that you come to the table, because that's what we said. God is going to set the table and we pray that the table has something uniquely yours for you to fill up on. That's what this is all about, to get to fill up something God has set the table with you and in mind and you have come to the table. You have come to the table. So thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your comments. You have been amazing. We are going to continue. We didn't know what God was doing, but God is doing a great thing. And we are so grateful that God included us, included us in his plan and trusted us with his children <laughs> to do what he has called us to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you. And we are going to continue. We're going to keep going. We are going to keep going. And we are going to constantly be on our face at the throne of grace, making sure we are exactly where God would have us to be. Yes. Amen. 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 We love you. <laughs> See you next Friday. Thank you for all the support. In Jesus name. <laughs> In Jesus name. Amen. Bye everybody.